Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine equation. We have 3a plus 5ab plus 2b equals 54 and a and b are integers. We are supposed to find the value of a plus b, but once you find a and b values, adding them up would be fairly easy, don't you think? So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem in two different ways. First method. So I'm going to go ahead and write the product first. 5ab plus 3a plus 2b, or not 2b, sorry, I had to say that, equals 54. Now, for these kinds of problems, we have a trick called Simon's favorite factoring trick, which is SFFT. And to be able to use that, we factor by grouping. It, this doesn't always work nicely uh, for this particular problem because of the coefficients. We need to manipulate a little bit, but I'll show you how we can do it in two different ways. So, first of all, I want to start off with a B. So I want to factor out a 5A. That's going to give me B. And then to get 3A from 5A, you need to multiply by 3 over 5. This is why it's not that nice. You get the idea? But this is good because what is going to follow is 2B, so we want to take out a 2 and then just multiply by B so that we have the same numbers here. Make sense? Okay, once we get that, we should follow up with a 3 over 5. But when you distribute, this is equivalent to adding 6 over 5, so I should be adding 6 over 5 to both sides. Make sense? So far, so good. I hope it does make sense because we're about to factor by grouping. So now b plus 3 over 5 is a common factor, so we can take it out and we end up with 5a plus 2, and this is equal to 276 divided by 5. Of course, we're going to get rid of the fraction, so don't worry about it. We're going to multiply both sides by 5, and that's going to get rid of the 5 here. And when you distribute the 5 here, you will be getting 5a plus 2. I want to write the a first. Multiply by 5b plus 3 equals 276. So this is the most critical part. By doing all these things, you're getting a nice equation in the factored form. Now, what would happen if you wanted to do this a little differently? You could also do the following, which is not always easy to see, but here's how it goes. Looking at this expression right here, we have a five, but we don't have a five. That's not good. So why don't we multiply both sides by 5? We can do that, right? Absolutely. Let's do it, and you'll see what happens. When you multiply by 5, you're going to get 25ab plus 15a plus 10b equals 270. And then here, we're going to factor out a 5a easily because we already multiply. Everything is good to go. Now we're going to get 5b plus 3, and this will just be 2 times 5b. So now we're going to add 3 to both sides, which means adding 6 to both sides, and then it'll be the exact same thing, which is probably a little easier. You don't have to deal with fractions because you multiply by 5 beforehand. You get the idea? You'll either multiply by that first or later. Okay, so you get to decide, but we end up with the exact same equation, which is 5a plus 2 multiplied by 5b plus 3. And that's equal to 276. Awesome. What are we going to do next? So we're going to go ahead and solve this equation because it's in the factored form. All we have to think about is factors of 276. What are they? What is 276? It is 2 times 138. Good. What else? 138 can be broken down. Let's think about it. 2 times 69. 69 is 2 times, wait, not 2 times, it's odd, 3 times 23, 23 is prime, so that's pretty much it. So if you do it in the prime factorization form, you're going to get 2 to the second power times 3 to the first power times 23. Does that do the trick? I think so. So how many factors are we going to get from here? You can easily evaluate it by looking at the powers. Just increase everything by 1, 3 times 2 times 2, that's going to give us 12 factors. So it's a lot of factors, but don't forget, they come in pairs. 
So we're basically going to be looking at six pairs here, one of which is 2 and 138. And of course, 138 and 2 is probably another one, which we didn't count, by the way, because 12, they're all unique factors, right? I think so. But anyways, another one would be 4 times 69. And with the case of that, so basically what we're going to do is, can this be 2 and this be 138? Good question. Yes. And the answer is yes, because this means A is 0 and B is 135 divided by 5, which is 27. So A equals 0 and B equals 27 satisfies this equation. And you should have known that. You know why? Because if you think about it, 2B is even, 54 is even. So if A is 0, this is going to disappear. Boom. You get B equals 27 right there. So that's one of the trivial solutions. Well, what happens if B is 0? Nothing. Because what happens is we don't have a solution. And the reason behind that is if B is 0, 54 is not divisible by 3. So we don't have an integer solution. Houston, we don't have a solution. Too bad. So not all values are going to work. And trial and error is definitely not the only way to do it. Probably not a good way to do it. You should just look at all the cases. But guess what? It's already been done. You don't need to worry about it. Wolfram Alpha gave me all the solutions. I'm going to show you what they are. But for this particular case, A plus B would be 27. You get the idea? I'm only going to give you one of the values. The rest is yours. Okay. Before we look at the result from Wolfram Alpha, should we look at the second approach at least? Take a quick glance. All right, let's find out. So obviously my goal is to solve for A and B, but we should be able to isolate. And if you look at our first method quickly, like carefully, we were able to separate A and B somehow, right? So how do you do that? Well, maybe I can just factor out a B here and write this as 5A plus 2, and then I have a 3A, and this is 54. Maybe I can just go ahead and isolate this. Let's see. I can subtract 3a from both sides and write it like this. And then maybe I can just divide both sides by 5a plus 2. And boom, you got the b by itself. Even though it's not super helpful, we can do the following. We can do a little bit of hocus pocus, abracadabra, or mathematics, right? A little bit here and there. So the only problem is negative 3 over 5 is not an integer. Too bad. But here's one thing we could do. We can multiply both sides by 5. That's something we can do. And when we do that, we're going to get something like this. 5b is equal to negative 15a plus 270 divided by 5a plus 2. Of course, the denominator is unchanged, right? We're only multiplying the numerator. Don't do both because that will not change the fraction. Now, do you see what I'm getting at? We can go ahead and do this now. Negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. So the question is, what is the denominator multiplied by negative 3? Let me tell you what it is. It's negative 15a minus 6. And why did I need that? Because I'm going to play with this number, manipulate it, so that I can get a multiple of 5a plus 2, which is negative 3 times that, which is this. So I do need a negative 15a minus 6. Now you know why, right? I explained it to you. Plus 276 will do the trick because we do need a 270. Boom, you got the idea, right? Now we're going to go ahead. See how painful the second method is? Oh, man. Come on. Okay, now we're going to separate this into like undo the addition and write it like this. Uh-oh. And then this will become negative 3 because you know that this is negative 3 times 5a plus 2. Of course, 5a plus 2 can never be 0 if a is an integer, right? Make sure to verify that. This is 5b. And now we can go ahead and cancel this out. And then add the 3, and guess what? You'll get the exact same equation, uh-oh, with much more pain, of course. But when you cross-multiply, you're going to get the exact same thing. But again, it's painful. You see that? But it can be done. No matter what, this is a method that works. Some people will probably like it. Let me know what you think. And we're going to go to Wolfram Alpha now. This doesn't bring us to the end yet. Ta-da! These are the values. As I told you earlier, 27 is one of them. Uh, 6 is another one, so on and so forth. I mean, you can find them. I already gave you the values. But notice that, you know how this problem came about? 
First, I thought about these values, made up an equation, and then find the result. But then, of course, there will be other solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.